In this video, we're going to look at calorimetry. And calorimetry is a process where you measure the delta H of reaction from the temperature change associated with the reaction. So in a calorimeter is basically an insulated device that measures the temperature change associated with the reaction. And so what we do is, is we, um, we run the reaction inside the calorimeter, heat is transferred to or from the reaction, and then that causes the calorimeter and its contents to change temperature. And then we can use our uh, specific heat capacity and heat capacity equations to figure out how much energy was transferred. Now the reason why it has to be insulated is so that it keeps all of the heat contained in the calorimeter, right? So we don't want, we want to make the calorimeter be the surroundings. So what we don't want is we don't want the heat to be transferred to the outside of the calorimeter because then we couldn't measure it, right? So we want all the heat to stay contained inside of the calorimeter and then we can measure it and from that measurement we get a very accurate measurement of the heat transferred. Now no calorimeter is perfect but you can actually design a calorimeter to be very close to perfect and that's generally speaking what we um, what we do. Now in general um, a calorimeter can be as simple as a coffee cup and it can be go up to a, something more complicated like a bomb calorimeter where you basically have a pressure chamber that's submerged in a tank of water inside of an insulated um, device. Okay, so that's what a calorimeter is and it, it can vary in its, what it's made out of. Um, but the idea here is that the heat that's transferred between, the heat that's transferred is between the reaction and the calorimeter. So by having the calorimeter be insulated, we can assume that all of the heat of the reaction is transferred directly to or from the calorimeter. So we can write this equation. This is called the general calorimeter equation, where we say minus Q of the reaction is equal to Q of the calorimeter. Now, it doesn't really matter which side you put the minus sign on. You could put the minus sign on the Q cal side, or you could put the minus sign on the Q reaction side. It doesn't matter because we know um, whatever the, the calorimeter loses, the reaction has gained. Whatever the reaction loses, the calorimeter has gained. So if it's exothermic, then what we'll, what, what we'll see is a rise in the temperature. If it's endothermic, we'll see a decrease in the temp of the calorimeter. Because when it's exo, the reaction gives off energy, so that's going to make the temperature of the calorimeter go up. When it's endothermic, the reaction absorbs energy, so that's going to make the temperature of the calorimeter go down. So now that we have a general idea of what a, the, calorimeter, the general cal calorimeter expression is, we're going to look now at how the problems are set up for different types of calorimeter questions. So there's really three main types. What we're distinguishing in this part of the video is not has nothing to do with the calorimeter or how it's set up. It just has to do with the information that you're given. So this is the info in the problem. And it's going to kind of depend on how you construct your general calorimeter expression. So in all types, we're going to start with the, the fact that Q minus Q of the reaction is equal to Q of the calorimeter. And then it's just going to depend on what you're given in terms of um, heat capacities related to the calorimeter as to how you're going to construct that. So type one is where you have heat that's being transferred to uh, the calorimeter and water. So in this case, you're going to get two different heat capacities. So you're going to get big C for the calorimeter And this is going to have units of joules per degree Celsius. And you're going to get a little c, and this is going to be for the water that's in the capacitor. The, the, not the capacitor, the calorimeter. So in this case, and this is going to be in joules per de gram degree Celsius. So for type 1, what's, what it's basically, the problem is going to say something like this. Um, heat is transferred to a calorimeter, and it contains 50 grams of water. The heat capacity for the calorimeter is... Uh, some number of joules per degree Celsius, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So you're going to get two heat capacities, and we have to deal with the heat being transferred to two different places. So in essence, what you have is you have your reaction, and heat is going in to two different places. You have heat going to the calorimeter, the actual shell 
that's the insulated device and then it's also going to the water inside of it and we have to handle the heat transfer to both of those different things so in this case we're going to start with minus q of the reaction is equal to q of the calorimeter but our calorimeter really consists of two components so what we're going to have is minus q of the reaction is going to equal q cal plus q water and so in this case you would have for the calorimeter they give you a uh, the big C and this is this is related to the calorimeter so you'd have minus Q of the reaction is going to equal big C Delta T uh, where the big C is taking care of the calorimeter part and you're gonna have plus um, little C, uh, you're gonna have plus MC Delta T which is the little C and this is gonna handle the water part so in essence it's still Q Cal it's just that your calorimeter is divided into two parts that you have to take care of both and the key words for this are trans is, is the words transfer to the calorimeter and to water and you're gonna get two different heat capacities so now let's look at the second type so type 2 is where it says assume all heat is transferred to the water so in this case, what it's basically saying is, is yes, you have a calorimeter and you have the water, but we're only going to give you information about the water because we're, what we're going to say is that the heat transfer to the calorimeter, the actual shell device, is small enough that we don't, we're going to not consider it. So it just says, assume all the heat is, is transferred to the water. So again, we just have to think about how we're going to set this up. So we have our reaction and this guy is being transferred. All the heat here is being transferred to the water. So we're definitely going to get a little c for the water. And so when we do minus q of the reaction is equal to q of the calorimeter, what we're going to plug in for q cal is going to be really q of water, which is uh, going to be mc delta t. So we're going to say that minus q of the reaction is going to equal mc delta t. And then all we need is the, uh, the joules per gram degree Celsius for the water, which is going to go in here, the little c. We need the mass of the water and the delta T. So that's, when it, that's, one of the, that's one of the possibilities that you might get. And then the third possibility is where it says, um, it, it gives you something, it gives you the heat capacity for the calorimeter and its contents. So what this one is saying is, so if you see something like this, where it says something to the effect of all everything together, put together, has a heat capacity, the water and the calorimeter has a heat capacity of big C, and then it gives you a big C with joules per degree Celsius, or this may be in kilojoules per degree Celsius. When you see a big C and it says for the calorimeter and its contents, what this is basically saying is that you have your reaction and it's going to the calorimeter, which is the calorimeter plus the water. And this big C is encompassing all of that. So remember how when we talked about heat capacities, we said that a standard heat capacity is, is dependent on the system, not necessarily on the substances in the system. So this is what I was getting at with that. A heat capacity could include the water, the calorimeter, the thermometer, everything that's in that system. They could just come up with one number for the entire thing. It doesn't matter how much water there is. They've already computed all of that into one nice package. So you'll get a single big C and, um, and then that's going to be it. And that's going to include your water and your calorimeter and everything else that's in that, in that system. So in this case, it would just be Q reaction is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, minus Q reaction is equal to Q cal. And in this case, the Q cal is just going to be big C delta T, where the big C encompasses all of the components. So we're actually going to look at two examples where we're going to work through these different types and we're going to analyze what's going on with, the, with this. Now remember, from a fundamental perspective, all three of these types are the same thing. That calorimeter is heating up or cooling down and we're measuring the delta T. It's just a matter of how we're going to use the different heat capacity equations to account for what's given in the problem. So it's just all we're doing here is we're just showing you the different setups that the problems can have to help you handle any calorimeter problem you might run across. So let's look at two examples. 
So the first one says a, five point, a 0.5856 gram sample of lactic acid, and it gives a molecular weight, is burned in a calorimeter whose heat capacity, including the contents, is 4.812 kilojoules per degree Celsius. The temperature of the calorimeter increases from 23.10 to 24.95 degrees Celsius. Okay, so then it says calculate the heat of combustion per gram of lactic acid or calculate the heat of combustion per mole of lactic acid. So we'll look at how we do both of those calculations also. Now, the reason why I explain those three types is because now what we have to do is we have to start interpreting these questions to see what type of problem this is. So it says, you know, we have this combustion reaction and it's burned in a calorimeter whose heat capacity, so not specific heat capacity, but heat capacity, including the contents is 4.812 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So this big C that they're giving us here, because notice the units, that's a big C, is everything. So this includes the calorimeter, the water, everything in that. So we know that in this case, we're gonna be using minus Q of the reaction is equal to um, big C delta T, because this heat capacity includes, uh, this, this single unit here includes everything inside that, that um, calorimeter. Okay, so let's actually set this problem up. Now, our goal in this case is to get the kilojoules per gram and the kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out how much energy was transferred by that particular amount of the lactic acid. So in this case, we set up our calorimeter expression, minus Q of the reaction is equal to Q of the calorimeter. Now we gotta figure out what our calorimeter expression is gonna be. Well, in this case, this is gonna be minus Q of the reaction is equal to big C delta T. And the reason why I say this is because it said that that big C is includes the calorimeter and all of its contents. So now we're gonna have minus Q of the reaction is equal to 4.182 kilojoules per degree Celsius times 24.95 degrees Celsius. That's where it wound up, minus 23.10 degrees Celsius. Now, just looking at this delta T, I know that the temperature of my reaction went uh, up. So this I know is exothermic. So my heat, my Q, better have a negative sign at the end. And that is why we put the negative sign over on the left over here. Because when you do this, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get Q of the reaction, uh, you're gonna get minus Q of the reaction is equal to 8.902 kilojoules. And then we have to move the minus sign over so our Q of the reaction in this case is going to equal minus 8.902 kilojoules. And that checks because this is exothermic, which is what we expected it would be. We should be getting a negative number because the heat that was transferred to the calorimeter made the temperature go up. So now let's look at how we can get parts A and B. So first it says get the kilojoules per gram of lactic acid. And then the second one says get the kilojoules per mole of lactic acid. So for the first one, that's pretty easy. We take our minus 8.902 kilojoules and we divide it by the number of grams. It was 0.5856 grams. And this is going to equal minus 15.20 kilojoules per gram of the lactic acid. Now for the second one, it wants it in kilojoules per mole. So in this case, we're gonna take our minus 8.902 kilojoules and we're gonna divide that, but we have to convert our 0.5856 grams into moles. So I'm just gonna do that quick conversion here where I say for every 90 grams, there's one mole. And so I'm gonna get a number and we're gonna divide by that number. And this is gonna give us 1,386 kilojoules per mole uh, as our final number with a minus sign. And actually now we can start to think of this in terms of the delta H. So this now, this number, because now we have for every one mole of lactic acid equals minus 1,386 kilojoules. Now we can use our knowledge of writing thermochemical equations. If we knew what the equation was, we actually don't in this particular case we don't know what the balanced equation is, so we can't write the thermochemical equation. But if we did know what that balanced equation was, we could then use this to come up with a delta H for that equation. 
and that's I think what we're going to do in the next problem. So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so number two says 33 mils of a 1.2 molar HCl solution is added to 42 mils of a solution containing excess NaOH in a coffee cup calorimeter. The temperature of the calorimeter and its contents increases from 25 to 31.8 degrees Celsius. The heat capacity of the coffee cup is 0.156 joules per degree Celsius. And it says, assume that the specific heat capacity and the density of the solutions are the same as that of pure water. Calculate delta H of the reaction. Okay, so we're getting two heat capacities here. We're getting a heat capacity for the coffee cup, and it says, assume that the specific heat capacity for the water is this. So in my setup, this is, the, this is going to be a type 1 setup where we have heat going to the water and we have heat going to the calorimeter. Now, be cautious because it does say the temperature of the calorimeter and its contents increases from 25 to 31.8 degrees Celsius. That could be something that might trip you up because you see it says those magic words that I put. But that doesn't really have anything to do with the heat capacities. You have to look at this from the perspective of the heat capacities. What heat capacities are you getting? And then how are we going to set up that equation? So now let's get to a clean slide here and we'll start working this one out. So a good thing to do for this is to write out the balanced reaction. So we have uh, for this one, we have the reaction of HCl and NaOH. So this one we can write a balanced reaction because we know that HCl plus NaOH aqueous gives H2O liquid plus NaCl aqueous. And what the question is asking us for is a delta H. Now to get this delta H, I need to get for every one mole of one of the reactants, I need to get the number of kilojoules. So in essence, what we need to do is we need to calculate and figure out the energy transferred per mole. So now let's start with the calorimeter part because that's the easier part to, to sort of deal with. So in this case, our reaction is transferring heat to the water and to the coffee cup. And so we're going to write our minus Q of the reaction is equal to Q of the calorimeter, but we have to break out our Q calorimeter into two parts. So in this case, we're going to have our Q of the calorimeter, the coffee cup essentially, plus Q of the water, which is another part of the calorimeter. So in this case, we're going to put um, for our reaction, minus Q of the reaction is going to equal the Q of the calorimeter, which for the calorimeter, they give us a big C and a delta T. They give us a heat capacity for this, for the, and we can have an associated delta T. And then for the water, we have MC delta T. They give us the specific heat capacity for water. And so what I'm doing there is I'm looking at the units of the heat capacities they give me. I saw that the heat capacity for the calorimeter, they give me in joules per degree Celsius, so I know I'm gonna use this equation big C delta T, and for the specific heat capacity, they give me joules per gram degree Celsius, so I know I'm going to be using this equation for the water. Okay, so now let's start to plug everything in. So we leave our minus Q of the reaction, and so on the left, we have big C, which in this case is uh, 0.156 joules per degree Celsius, and then we have to put in our delta T. So it says that the temperature rises from uh, 25 to 31.8, so we put 31.8 degrees Celsius minus 25.0 degrees Celsius, and then that's the that takes care of the calorimeter, the coffee cup side. And then for the water, now we have to think about what the equate what the question said. So let's jump back to the question and think about how we can get a mass of water. So in this one, um, we need to get a mass of the water. And so we have to start looking at what's going on with this, this question. So the only thing we have about the water is we have that there's 33 mils and 42 mils in the reaction once everything is combined. So we're taking this 33 mils and we're adding to it 42 mils and we're getting a grand total of 75 mils of H2O. That's co coming together during the reaction, right? So when the reaction starts, we've added the HCl to the NaOH. So now the question is, is, well, how do I get a mass out of this? And it says the density of the solutions are the same as that of pure water. Now, on the exam, we would tell you what the density was, but you should kind of remember this. The density of pure water is one gram per mil. So what we're gonna do 
to get our mass is we know that we have 75 mLs times for every 1 mL there's 1 gram. So this is very simple. We have 75 grams of water. So we can plug in 75 grams there times our specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then we have the same temperature change. Um, and the reason why I know it's the same temperature change is because if you noticed in the question, it said that the, co the calorimeter and its contents all came up to that same temperature. So when you do this out, when you multiply the left and the right sides for the coffee cup and the water, and you add it together, you get a grand total of minus 2,134 joules. And remember, I had to bring this minus sign over. So this would have all been positive unless I, if I forgot my minus sign, but I have to bring the minus sign over. And that makes sense because again, our heat is rising. So this is an exothermic reaction. I have to have a minus sign in there. That's very, very important. So now we have the heat transferred per, um, now we have the heat transferred per unit of, per, per, for this specific reaction. So now the next question is, is how do we get this into some kind of um, energy per, per mole? So let's jump back to the question and take a look and see what we can figure out. So if I'm looking for moles, um, what we see is there's 33 mils of a 1.20 molar solution. So I know from this information I could get a number of moles. And then it's added to 42 mils of a solution containing excess NaOH. So I know that this guy is going to be my limiting reagent if the NaOH is excess. So that means that I'm going to use this to figure out the number of moles of HCl that are reacting. So let's figure out what that is based on the 33 mils of a 1.20 molar solution. So this is going to equal 33 mils. And we got to get that into liters. And then for every one liter, there is 1.20 moles. So this is going to give us 0 0.03396 moles. So now what I want to do now is I want to figure out, well, how many kilojoules or joules would there be for every one mole? So what I have to do is I have to basically take a ratio here. So, uh, and you could set this up one of two different ways. You could basically say, what would it be over one if I had this over X? But what you find out really is that all you have to do is you just have to take the number of joules minus two, one, three, four joules, and then divide it by the number of moles, 0 0.03396 moles. And this gives you 53,888 joules per mole of HCl. Or if you convert this, this would be minus 53.8 kilojoules per mole of HCl. So now bringing this back up to my reaction up here, I need to get for, for delta H, I need to know for every one mole of HCl, how much energy is being transferred. And that's minus 53.8 kilojoules. So, and the reason why it's one mole is because of the stoichiometric coefficient of one that's there. So I can say for my delta H for this reaction that it's minus 53.8 kilojoules. So that's how you set up a, that's how you can set up some of the different calorimeter problems. You saw in the first one, the case of a type three, and then you saw in the second one, the case of a type one. Uh, it doesn't really matter what type it is. In the end, generally speaking, you're gonna get an energy out of it and then you're probably going to have to figure out delta H and from the delta H you know that what you have to get is the number of moles of one of the reactants and the energy and once you have the energy and the number of moles then you just go back to your knowledge of how to write thermochemical equations to get delta H.